Welcome, <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome back <laughs> to the, to the Trifles podcast. What? What's wrong? <laughs> I'm, 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 it's going to take a while to be back to normal. Fuck being sick, dude. With, with well, uh, you what spent all, your whole time making fun of everybody Jesus. getting sick, and then you got sick yourself, and now you're, you know everybody's meant to just be uh, kissing your ass. Well, I got news for you, buddy. Um, you, 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 you get what you give. Um, I, don't I'm let go. Fine. You got give a reason to, to live. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like there is space for both. You got the Walking music in you. Who... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm I'm cool to I'm cool with either. Yeah. Um, no, if you guys had a good week, we had a couple of days of lovely sunshine. Yeah, it's uh, gone back we to freezing outside. ass cold again. It's like uh, we smelled the five flowers degrees today, and now it's just yeah, it's, t- it's of course turned around. Crap! Yeah. Um, Crap! All all of the all the beautiful people. Um, we didn't we didn't go we didn't get to go to GDC in the end. No, nope. we were going to go to the game developers we, conference. We both punked out um, of it big time. Well, you, you got might sick. have gotten lucky. You got Jem, yeah, Jem was, went out there, right? Yeah, she, she got, got she got, she got the vid. She got stuck in a fucking hotel. Yeah, so mm. I think she had a crappy time. Some yahoos were walking around with COVID, just mingling with everybody. Like, oh, I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, a bunch yeah. of people got fucking sick. Idiots. Yeah, I still haven't yeah. had it. I I still have not had COVID, even though, you though know my of. whole family have, has had it. Yeah, you, I mean, you yeah, could that be I one of those asymptomatic. Could be. Ones. could be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you're just um, just a big macho man who doesn't feel it. Just well, shrugs it obviously, off, you know. Obviously, just like yeah, no big deal. I'm a dad. Yeah, I'm always, to, I had to get um, all the yeah. all of our door frames widened in my house so that I could fit through them because I'm <laughs> so stocky, muscular, good looking. I <laughs> With your shoulders, of, yeah. Right. I spend a lot of. Time I thought it was at the, the belly that was the problem. Yeah. No, um, no, 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 no. That's uh, that 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 sticks out like um, the the other way. You know what I mean? So oh, I, I see. You can yeah, edge through. Yeah, I still got a slender. I still got a slender sort of uh, frame. But then, if you look at, t- at me from the side, you're not gonna walk sideways through a doorway. <laughs> exactly. You're exactly. <laughs> you're gonna. You're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> you have to walk like a real man. Yeah, yeah. Just swagger. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta get something hell. off my chest before I forget. I gotta get something off my chest too. Holy crap! It's getting okay. huge. It's... All right. <laughs> All right. I saw Matrix Resurrections, the new Matrix movie. Oh yeah. Uh, oh dear. I I paid money to watch it because I thought. Did you? Yeah. I, I was like, I was taking an evening off streaming. And okay, let me guess. Let me guess how many people were in the cinema for this movie. I'm I gonna did guess not go to a cinema. Just you. You, oh, you rented oh. it at home. Yeah, I rented it at home. Okay, all right. And I just okay. stuck it on the TV. I was like, this right. is going to suck. But, you know, I went in with zero Did you watch it on your own? No, I made Mrs. F watch it with me. <laughs> that's good that you uh, went in with zero expectations, though. I think that's a healthy approach <laughs> I, to yeah, movies, see where this is going. It was, as if it was, like, punishing for poor old fucking <laughs> I was like, we're Mrs. watching F. this. She was like, it's going to suck. I was like, don't worry. We'll watch it. We'll just laugh. Look, you're holding hands and you're like getting through it together. You're gritting your teeth. It's like we're just going to have to do we, this we, as a couple. We Thelma and Louise did all the way through the movie. And let man. me tell you something. It fucking sucked. <laughs> yeah, that sucks, man. Stank. Uh, See, the like, thing is, unbelievably like, bad. I know you guys are always make fun of me for watching crappy reality TV shows with my wife. But the thing is, like, I never come out of that thinking, oh, that sucked because it's always like pretty funny. You know what I mean? But like, I would feel bad if I went and spent money to rent something knowing that it would suck and then it's sucking and there was no salvaging it whatsoever either. Like, it just plain sucks. Well, I quite like getting angry about how bad a film is. And I really enjoy analyzing in my mind afterwards what made it so awful because i i just i i love that i love like watching movies and thinking how why did this work why didn't this work it's just interesting it's just it's like a hobby yeah. i guess so but also there is always the chance that it doesn't suck and you know that the apprentice or whatever is going to just be laughably annoyingly bad yes. enjoyably so but yeah. i also watched some movies recently that were like like i watched coda which won the oscar Best yeah. I watched it at, not not that anybody I, I really it celebrated it, it Oscar, much because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of their arsehole had a meltdown. Yeah, Again, unbelievable. But yeah, so Coda was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, and Ma- Matrix Resurrections was the complete opposite of Coda in every way, but also in, in terms of of enjoyability, it, it was so hopelessly bad. Uh, and I've read some pretty bad takes about it. People saying, oh, actually, it was like a protest against studio power. And, uh, you know, they, they drop a message into the film where basically I, I, I get the impression, I'm sure someone's got some lengthy, tedious Reddit opinion about this that they'll make or in the YouTube comments or whatever. 
But as I understand it, from what was blatantly stated in the movie, either either Lionel Wachowski made it, or they were going to make one anyway without her. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I think it would have been better if they'd made one without her, because if you're going to make a movie suck on purpose as a message to the studio, which is the only possible solution for why this is so terrible, uh, don't waste my time. Because that's not fair for the fans. If you made this genuinely thinking people are going to love this, you you should not be making movies anymore. I, I would have thought that this would be clear after the, the two Matrix sequels we already had, which were also terrible, and now you've made this, which is even worse somehow than those. Stop making movies. You can't do it. You had an amazing shot with Matrix. It was brilliant. Loved it. Everything else since then has been terrible. Stop. Let, let someone else try it. Oh my Please step away from the Man, Matrix. Man, imagine people actually listen to you, though. That would be fucking awesome. <laughs> like if, if 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 like if that if if they were just like holy crap he's right he's he's he's, he's right. nailed I, it he's nailed it he's put into words I what I've been feeling for so long <laughs> now <laughs> I oh, wish I wish we could get people to stop so often though like Game of Thrones when that started to go around the oh, corner yeah. everyone was like begging people just please stop no yeah. stop, put please it out stop, of please. Like misery it's a, a car you crash that everyone though, could I, see I, coming I've do you know what I mean yeah I know I I I I still watched it though and honestly like. I just wasn't that invested in it. I didn't really care. And it was just kind of like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't yeah. know. It just, it didn't affect me. Like, I, I, I see like, I see like these wounded war veterans after watching all of Game of Thrones. And I just think like, man, whatever. Like, the special effects were pretty good for TV. Like, it was fine. You know, <laughs> like, I, I didn't, I just didn't give a shit. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think with The Matrix, you reckon... Do you reckon they did their research? They were like, oh, let's watch back all the Matrix movies, you know, and but that was a trap because the second and third ones were garbage. And they, they were like, they learned all these terrible lessons yeah. from those movies. Yeah. Or was it just, was it just the, 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 the hammy editing, hammy ed acting? So, was, was, it, was it, is this the, what was, so the, was the, it the, the script? No, it, it, it was everything. Matrix? It was genuinely everything. The, the issue, the issues start with the fact that the, the whole aesthetic for the Matrix is essentially grounded in late 90s uh cool. you know sort of like what what was Flip meant to phones, be cool slick like jacket right? yeah. and the sunglasses, sunglasses and the, the long coats, coats. No, nobody does that anymore like the nobody slow down bullet looks time. like that yeah so they even have like the the whole setup is that neo is back in the matrix he's uh, i'm not going to spoil anything for anybody that wants to see it but basically he's back in the matrix and um, he sort of sees a therapist who convinces him it's all in his mind and gives him all these drugs and stuff like that. And there's all constant throwbacks to the original film. And it turns out in this new movie that he's made a video game. And the three other Matrix movies, by the way, they hardly show anything from the two sequels. So that even they know that they fucking stank. They're, most of the stuff that they reference mm. is from the original film. And you look at it and first of all, Keanu Reeves is like 25 years younger. So you think, wow, this really is a sequel that's like way overdue, uh, if you like, you know, but I probably should have rebooted it with a whole new cast and a whole new setting, but they didn't. Mm. So they had to shoehorn Keanu Reeves back in. He's a games designer who made the Matrix game. So everything that he thought was the Matrix was just this game and blah, 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 blah. That's such a good idea, actually, as you just said, like to reboot it with a, a with a new story with a new cast, like it's in the a, it's same It's an interesting sort of universe. Like it, it, honestly, it the, the Animatrix. You could do stuff. The Animatrix, which I know I'm not a big anime fan. Everybody knows that. But the Animatrix genuinely had some really good episodes. And the setting for how the robots, that there, there is one, it's a two-part about how the robots took over and the downfall of, of humanity and everything. That is really, really good. Really dark, really interesting. I want to like to see some, some more of that. No, uh, we still have the same aesthetic, which is basically everyone who's good dresses like someone who thinks they're some kind of emo goth fucking wannabe gangster something. I don't know. It's, it's just so weird. Like Wesley Snipes' Blade. <laughs> exactly. They all look like extras from Blade. Uh, it's like, well, that <laughs> aesthetic doesn't really exist anymore. And all of the action feels awful. Like there's no big set piece where you could think, wow, at least that was a cool moment. The, the, the whole bullet time rooftop sequence in the Matrix and the lobby shootout in the Matrix was so iconic in the 90s at the time. Yeah, yeah. And all these movies just copied them. Like nothing like that had been done. I'm not saying that every filmmaker should like, oh, well now you've got to come up with something just as, you know, epoch defining for action movies. That's very difficult to do. I get that. But at least have good action sequences. I just don't know. At least the... have some good fundamentals. They just weren't there. 
I just don't know like if the striker. Matrix warranted in... like multiple movies, you know? Like, no, it didn't. I, I felt like it the didn't. first one was was good. I enjoyed it. I don't even remember much of it, but I I felt like when I got to the end of it, I was like, okay, great. You know, like that should have just been it. Like it would have gone should've down in absolutely. history as just like this great movie or whatever. Yeah. But now but they the, the franchise itself sequels. is just like kind of a, it almost feels like a bit of a joke now, you know, like it, it was, you it hear was about bad. it. It was reboots bad. and and everything yeah it's and a shame also i i think they're gonna make another two oh I think. no uh they certainly seem to be setting it up that way they set up so many characters and stuff like that that you think they're not just gonna <clears throat> bin this off and no film studio commits to something like this nowadays without saying we want three movies and two tv series and blah 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 they all yeah. want this extended run of income from from this ip because yeah. rebooting it is obviously a big deal. Well, and then yeah. they hope to make bank out of it. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they will just stop. They will say, you know what? That was a bad idea. Let's not make any more. How it many was, it bad was reboots do they have to, to make to realize that it's no I good though? Like there's I been mean, too, I there's paid for too it. many to count, you know? Like, yeah, I paid for it though. Yeah, that's I? true. I'm yeah. sure some other suckers out there fell into the same trap. Well, I did it, it has like a, the Matrix, like anything, has super fans as well, right? It'll have people God. that are just. Honestly. love everything about it even though the movies are crap and they'll even admit that some of the movies are crap but they still just love the universe love the characters love the aesthetic or like everything yeah. just works for them sort of thing could be could be but my but God, uh, that, but stop. surely that that's that that's not enough of a majority to make it a runaway success though like you know like there's it, it's not like i mean also you're looking at people who are 25 years in the future I mean, I, I think that, that, that you've got to understand that you're aiming at a very specific demographic here. Yeah. You know? me, me and Ben were talking about this because we want to sort of make a miniatures game. We, <laughs> we like, want to make a Matrix out. sequel. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> just, uh, we, we wanted to finance a Matrix sequel of we our own. To do ben was going to write it movie. and uh, I was going to uh, affront up uh, some of the initial capital to get this project <laughs> off the ground. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but it's tough because you're like, well, you know, there are, are you just have to assume there's people like you. I think it's yeah. like, well, I like this, yeah. So other people must be like this, but I guess the well, a lot as you get that older and older, lot, right? Like we, the pool of people who are like you shrinks, right? Because people diverge and diverge and diverge. Right, right. Like when you're 13, the things you like are probably also liked by fucking millions of other kids, right? Sure. Whereas. When you're very sp specifically, you know, getting on the thing that you played that you the Matrix that you played as a kid or the thing that you did 25 years ago yeah, that, that you're still into now and, uh, has made it kind of a niche, yes. right? Um, and then everybody's so, calling you a boomer and stuff because they listen to more mm, modern hip hop and stuff, and you're you're still exactly. stuck in the 90s and whatever. Yeah, I know, I know how it goes. I know. Oh my god. So, so it wasn't it wasn't a success. Old Matrix. It was, um, it was dreadful, genuinely, genuinely dreadful. Needs so, how many? How, what? What? Uh, what? What star rating will you give that out of uh, ten? Out stars? of ten, I would give the Matrix two point two. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> big ups to the Matrix <laughs> so franchise. Um, I, that's this week's big ups. Uh, two point two stars out of ten. For the most recent uh, Matrix movie, so that that I think that that constitutes a must miss, honestly. Oh, like, it's a must miss. Even avoid. if it's free, avoid watching it. Give it a it. big old swerve. Don't right. watch it. Do not watch it. Good. Just watch Good. fucking Hunt for Red October for the millionth time, like I did the other day. What a film! Oh man, what I haven't seen film. that in years. God, That's I great. have not seen that in a long time. There, there's a or new Top Gun I movie coming out Trans as well. Three. By the way, did you guys see that? More tea, new... anybody? Yeah, Top Gun, Top Gun Maverick or dysfunction or something. Or something, something or, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> another another franchise reboot that probably it's just the old, didn't it's need the old to... bad version. Tom Cruise still yeah. looks the same as he did in the original Top Gun. Somehow, I don't know. Is he like like a back to tank at home or? something that he i think it's he, just called expensive skin doctors and plastic surgery I he's got to be right like uh he's got to be i think i think the i was reading something about tom cruise and his uh cosmetic surgery because he has admitted to having some done but not lots done but um like an expert on cosmetic surgery was saying where he's where he's done a good job of it is that he's had it done little and often so he hasn't had like any big you know, sweeping changes. Like you haven't seen him one right. minute and then the next minute he's just got like really big lips or something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's been like all these like little tiny tweaks, almost like he has something done like every day, but it's so gradual that you never really notice. But also he still looks pretty young considering he's 
not that young anymore, right? Like, how- I think it's like a style thing, right? Like, he has looked consistent for the last 40 years, yeah. right? He has looked the same. Yeah. And so, in that sense, it's it's not like other people who tend to go through phases where they dramatically change their look or change up their style, right? Where they, no. Especially changing their hair. You think he's still or- wearing the same underpants, style of underpants he was wearing in that uh, movie? You know, the one where he's dancing in his underpants? He comes sliding across Risky the- business. Risky business. It, it, there we go. It is kind of it is kind of weird to think, because I think- He's still got the same it, it, pair. That- he's like, he shows everybody who's interested, like, hey, check these out. They're like fucking falling <laughs> apart. The elastic's he gone. <laughs> There's holes and shit in them. They're like but all like-, like <laughs> They've gone all beige and stuff from like- I don't know if that's- I times. think. I think- it's probably just he probably bought like a hundred or a thousand pairs of underpants right. in 1980 right. and has been working his way through identical ones brand new ones every year ever since until you know he's got enough to last until he's 100 yeah and I, I think he's 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 that's that's i think that's the thing we see in celebrities often is that when they change their look suddenly they look 10 years older right or a bit younger um you know and you think oh shit they've They've, they must have had some work done or done something. But, and I think he has been nipped and tucked. Look at his hairline. You know, look at his, like, it, it hasn't changed. Do you know what I mean? As soon as his hair starts retreating anywhere, it's like he's had a little couple of hairs put back in, you know. Yeah. Um, it's very cleverly, yeah, like you said, little and often. Little and often, like, yeah. yeah. So, like, so we don't notice the change. Yeah. Because sometimes um, people rock you're up and you haven't seen them for a couple can. of weeks and they've just had, like, this major surgery and they look they look crazed right like they just look they don't look quite themselves or like it, it's very it's the noticeable lips. the yeah, lips, lips one is the you can't do the lips thing yeah you, the, you get all the stuff injected don't don't do that and they that's and, a, that's and people can't one. stop it's like when you when you go to the dentist and they and they uh, freeze your mouth right if they're going to do yeah. something on it you can't stop licking your lips cuz it feels so weird <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. they do though that's the giveaway right you, yeah, you can always tell bizarre. somebody's had something done to their lips because they can't stop licking like their lips or it's uh it's like the it's so like the dead game boy he's got he's got three movies coming out if you look at uh the mission impossible series which he has really made his own uh he, he the first mission impossible movie that he made was in 1996 wasn't the and original it, the it was originally maxwell smart right mission impossible was that the same one no or was that, that get was smart get smart that, was, it, that was the one with the Dome of Silence and he had like the shoe phone and stuff, right? Yeah, that was Get Smart, which they remade with... God, who was it they remade it with? Was it Steve Carell? He would, yeah, Either I way. think I, I, I seem to, to... Or Jim possibly... Carrey? I want to say oh, it was maybe, Steve Carell, yeah. but they, they remade Get Smart. But um, So Mission Impossible 1996, the original reboot. I was really disappointed because I was a big fan of the TV series at the time. Yeah, the I remember the TV, TV series. series. This message will self destruct, and, and right. then that you had like the fucking like dynamite rope thing or whatever. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like yeah, really yeah. hype. And they, they very, very rarely used violence in Mission Impossible, the TV series. They were trying to get in and get out, and it was like watching con artists because they had yes. to convince people. That this had not happened. That the agency had not interfered. This yes. was just the way yeah, things. Yeah, and it was out. always like sort of like some high tech gadgetry yeah. and stuff like that. And there were guys in a in, van, yeah. and they'd be, you know they'd be saying, okay, you know they'd come up with this plan, and you'd think it had gone wrong, but it worked out. It was great. Yeah. And Martin Landau was in it. He was fantastic. Like it was just a really good show. And they took Mission Impossible, and they just said, let's just have bog standard action movie with some vague spy stuff, just guns and shooting all the time. That'll be it. But they've got like a fucking couple of gadgets. So it's like they, a knockoff they, James Bond shitting on Mission Impossible. But I'm I feel actually like, really uh, going to love this series. I've only seen one of the movies, but I feel like the whole movie is somebody sneaking into somewhere with a USB stick and then plugging it into <laughs> a computer and getting stressed out because the loading bar is like really cutting it fine. <laughs> and then you hear that really satisfying keyboard tapping sound that, that they always put in movies. And they when, always do that same thing where they go, we're yeah. in. We're in. We're in. The loading bar is like yep. loading and shit. Yeah. Is that? Am I? Am I right though? Is that? No, like... no, that, that's a that's like ninety percent of the movies. I'd say. Right. And honestly, the, the the more recent as the series has gone on, it's really gotten a lot better. And it's a really good action movie now. More, Mission Impossible Fallout was a banging action movie. Really, really good. I recommend seeing it if you can. Right. Um, How many stars yeah. for that one? I would give Mission Impossible Fallout a very solid eight out of ten. Wow! I okay. Really, really Holy loved shit. it. Yeah, it was really good. Man. Um, 
But yeah, anyway, where was it? We were talking about fucking Tom Cruise. Um, he, Fuck. he doesn't age. He's, he's got a, three movies he's... coming out. One of them is a new yeah, Mission so Impossible. Two new Mission Impossible. Oh, two. One of them is in post production, and there's right. one they're filming now. Wow. And there's Top Gun Maverick. Yes, Top Gun Maverick. And he's Captain yeah. Pete Maverick Mitchell, is the character that he's playing. It's, was he that. Pete Mitchell in the original one as well? Because it's not the, the timeline doesn't make sense, right? Because nor like by now, yeah. if he was Maverick in the original Top Gun in 1986, at this point he would be a retired fighter jet pilot and probably would have worked several years as a commercial airline pilot, right? Yeah, <laughs> which is uh, arguably not as exciting of a movie. Uh, well, but, he, but like, he's in it. If we're looking he's at realism it. and timelines, that's where he's at now. Probably coming up to retirement from that as well, I would have thought. Although well, some of them stay on. They're a bit like doctors in that sense, right? Like yeah. they can get pretty old and still do it because it's the experience that counts. True, yeah. I mean, I don't know how old Sully was when he landed uh, his plane on the Hudson. Man, he he, I think he was pretty old. Like man. he was, he had white hair for sure, which well, I'm, yeah, I'm getting some now, but my, I'm not like Leslie Nielsen like or Steve Martin, like a full head of white hair sort of thing. I think you got to right. be a bit older or so have like a... Sully is 71 now right all right so that happened uh, what like 10 years ago i want to say 2009 okay so, so that would have like, been what is yeah. that 13 years ago so he was in his 50s right Late he 50s. was like 58 mm, 59 yeah. yeah yeah um so, so tom cruise is 59 yeah. now and he's he's playing as this test pilot um i guess how old is the average test pilot? You know, U.S. Well, Army test pilot? I think, well, it, I think it varies. Retire? I think in the I feel like in the in the U.S. Army, probably younger. But like if it's NASA or something, older. Because normally, like uh, if you're doing test pilot stuff for not for for NASA, normally you have to have a tremendous amount of experience, like already being like a fighter jet pilot or something like that, right? So they tend to be older. I feel like I don't know. I mean, I watched one documentary about the Challenger, and that seemed to to be the case from what I could tell. So that's what I'm basing all of my uh, info on. I don't know if you guys agree with that. So Chuck Yeager, who's probably the most famous test pilot uh, in history, I'd argue, um, although that maybe people would come up with a better one. Chuck Yeager had his own video game on the Amiga. Right, back in the, Chuck back Yeager's in the Chuck Yeager's um, pilot wings, the original pilot wings. The, the... He made he he made sure. loads. He, right. there, there were lots of Chuck Yeager video games. Um, really? Hi, yeah. I'm Chuck Yeager. Welcome to my video game. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just a golf game. I've nothing to do with flying. Oh, but, man. Yeah. Chuck Yeager video wow. games. There was Chuck Yeager's Air Combat, and there is a little a what? little picture of Chuck Yeager on the menu. Right. I'm just looking at it now. And there he is. They Chuck do this Yeager. a lot, right? Like the Madden franchise was the same. They used to have Mario Andretti um, um, car racing. I can't remember what. It was like NASCAR Mario Andretti or something. But like they used something to have. Something like that. They even did a Bill Lambeer basketball game in the 90s. Who was like. Uh, they, they used to do a lot more celebrity video games. I yeah, feel. yeah. Um, I, I mean, when was the last time there was a celebrity <laughs> had a video game that came out? Well, all the was, sports like, games do, though. Like all of them. No, have they just stick the them on names. the cover. Yeah, yeah, but right? like they still. Right, but it's not like it's not called, uh, you know, LeBron James's basketball twenty twenty two. No, it's NBA two K two two. Yeah, and he might be on the cover. Like that's different. Right. Yeah. Um. So Chuck Yeager's Advanced Flight Trainer by Electronic Arts. What a fucking EA. That's when EA used to actually make good stuff. Yeah, back in the day, man. It's back wow. in the day. When, when they, when the they dropped is, Chuck Yeager, that's when shit started to really hit the fan <laughs> for them. So, so, it, so Chuck Yeager's fucking air combat came out in 1991. Whoa. In 1994. Yeah. PC Gamer named it the ninth best comp computer game ever. Well, okay, wow. in 1991, and in, and what else came out in 91? Warcraft. Fuck no. Warcraft I 1, I, I think, even. might have come out in 91 or maybe 1991 even later video than that. games. Battletoads, okay. Lemmings. Yeah. Legend Battle of Toads. Zelda, A Link to the Past, we were talking about the other week. Wow, what a game. Yeah, I Duke remember getting yeah. so Link to the actually, Past was huge. We're man. actually Holy good crap. games. Right? In the original out. Duke Nukem, which was not great. Civilization, no, the played... original Civ came out in 1991, baby. Wow, a golden age yeah. of well, Chuck Yeager's Super, Yeager's Echo, and Super Castlevania. And even by 1994, they were still voting at night. However, by 1998, 
it was only 23rd best computer game ever released. Re- they referred to it as a classic golden oldie. It's seven years old at that <laughs> well, point. I mean, it's a mind golden though, right? You're talking about it. And that was, it was a young industry at the time. time. It was, yeah. you know, there wasn't much... There wasn't the volume of just shows uh, material you how fast there is stuff now. was moving. Yeah. Well, that I, I'll be honest with you, my kids the other day were making fun of that dance that kids used to do where they put their hands to the left. Flossing. Yeah, flossing. Right, and then they went in front shorts. and behind. So they were doing that, like, remember the force? I was like, yeah, you guys were doing it like three like years three ago. Three years like, ago, you can't yeah. get nostalgic. <laughs> but that's thirty-three percent of their life. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just catching up on the floss, <laughs> man, oh man. Alien breed. Anyone remember Alien breed? What a game! No, what I don't remember. What the fuck is Alien breed? So ninety-one. You were you were good. a bit older than me in ninety-one, even Flax, because what are you yeah. like four or five years older than me? So you would have been. I'm, I turned I turned forty-six on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm. You're like. What, I'm going to be forty. No, I'm be forty-two. This in a couple of months. So you are forty-one. So, yeah. Yes, and so that that's five years. Yeah. So I mean, Alien Breed was a fantastic game on the Amiga. It was really fucking good. Quite hard, um, but just a. It was a top-down fucking two-player like your versus. It was literally aliens. It was aliens. Um, and it was, yeah, it, was it was Team Seventeen. It was right in Team 17's golden era when they were cranking out some real belters uh, it was a great game really really great game it was it was based on um it, looked, it played a lot like gauntlet right which was right, kind right. of um but with alien multi dude. multiplayer side scrollery dungeon crawlery thing they did yeah. a, um there yeah. was a game that came out um on steam that was free i think like a couple of years ago that was like that it was sort of like a top-down alien shooter game Right, um, but I can't remember the name of it. But I I played it a bit, and it was it was actually kind of yeah, fun. But it did remind a, me of like lot. an old '90s console game for sure. Like the twin the twin stick genre. It's always so yeah. filled with games, and they're all kind of I can't get on with them honestly. But like so, they're so they're so prevalent. Do you guys easy remember make, Smash TV? Yes, that was a fucking crazy game. It was pretty game. nuts. I yeah, I remember game. I remember playing it. Um, a bit. I think I rented I don't it one weekend. Really actually. know what that is. It, it was, was like a combat like arena, like almost like it was like a Running Man kind of thing, right? Like it was like a... I, I, to me that was the original twin stick shooter. Yeah, it where was like, it was... you move with one stick, you shoot with the other. But there was one before that called Berserk. Oh, Any old remember. OG gamers will remember Berserk. Remember Berserk. Uh, look it up. It was very old. I had it on. I think I had Berserk on my Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Um, but it was an it was a belt. Berserk was was really fucking scary and good. Um, but yeah, it was good. Anyway, sorry, carry on. No, there's like the thing is uh, now nowadays what you have is you have have these people who are enthusiasts for this, you know, and they have series of these cabinets in their garage. Yeah, and you you can actually get them. We were looking to get one for the office. You can get them, and they have like. They're kind of like a generic cabinet, yeah, so yeah. the cabinet will be themed some way. But the, it will you be able to play like yeah. like a thousand. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Old old yeah, because it just comes that, with like a itself. like a piece, right. like a hard drive loaded just with just an a bunch enormous of, library yes. of of every I mean, single of these classic games. They do that with uh, circuit boards anymore. No, no, for this, like they, they've did. done that with a lot of the consoles as well. Like we got one of those mini NES uh, ones that has like the yeah, original yeah, controller and everything, but the NES. Um, thing itself is just like a flash drive inside a you know uh, like a to make to made to look like the original NES but much smaller because the original NES was fucking huge it was like the size right, of a right. phone book if you remember um, it was a big boy. It is and the cartridges like were fucking big too replay some um, of the stuff so you don't need cartridges missed. and you just you plug it in it's got like whatever is like 60 games like on it and you you just get like a little menu you flick through it and uh, it's like you know it's like a Netflix but of like old games but the same rules apply. Like my, we we got it, and I was playing like some of the older games. But you're just you're you're spoiled for choice, right? So you play, you play a game for like two minutes, and you die, and you're just like, oh, well, I'll just go try another one. And then you 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 sort of blast through yeah, all of them no, true. in that like half-assed way, and then never touch it again. So it's, it's like a like, buffet. Yeah. You don't just eat the whole pizza no. that's on. You have a little slice, yeah, you know, yeah. and then you go get some fucking sausage rolls and some. Volvo, and a mousse bouche, uh, but you never really uh, get to grips with 
Euh, je le vent. Tu as toi. Quoi, vous le vent. C'est ce qu'on a fait. Je ne sais pas. Je pense que c'est snowing. Fuck off, is it snowing? No, it's like... I noticed a distinct lack of bird song in the background today well, as well. They're all fucking frozen they're solid. They're probably the all dead or hibernating. Plummeted. Yeah, they're confused. <laughs> what's what's going on? What the fuck? I was having babies and now it's freezing fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> they were all fucking really, yeah, like over the weekend. The pigeons have been stop. going nuts in my in my tree. Man, no, the, we've had pigeons in my backyard because the um we had like the. The, the the turf in our backyard we had it like um you know like when you seed it like ahead of the spring and and you you use like a machine to sort of like bring it up it almost like fluffs up the the turf and gets rid of some of the dead grass and stuff and then they put like some seed down but man the, the pigeons have just been like speaking of buffets treating my backyard like a fucking seed buffet they've been back there just constantly pecking and eating up the seeds and stuff But I, I feel like it's probably fine that they do that because they're just going to like poo on the grass and that it'll probably just... It's part of the circle of life. It's part of the circle of life, yeah, yeah. Before we carry on, fellas, have you done any spring cleaning yet? Hell no, I haven't. Lewis. I had a shower today. Does that count? The drapes need dusting. The lawn needs mowing. Do you know where I'm going with this? No. No. Well, Manscaped has oh, the full package for you. Of course. That's kind of spring clean. Yeah. You know, you want to get your, your boys looking and smelling like the fresh tulips that your partner wants. Yes. Uh, or if you were a partner, maybe maybe get your lad sorted How out. How can I make my wife care about my balls? Do you think if I trim them enough, she'll pay attention to them? Yeah. I think Thanks, so. Manscaped. You can spray uh, Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. It's anti-chafing, ball deodorant and moisturizer. Get some real soft. Keep, keep your boys from sticking to your leg and leaves them smelling like fresh flowers. Remember when we were kids, it was cool to shave like a word into the side of your head or whatever? Yeah. I'm going to shave the word juicy into my muff. <laughs> well, you could do that. Uh, the start of spring also marks the start of Testicular Cancer Awareness Month in April. Uh, Manscaped is partnering with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer. Uh, so yeah, um, it is the most common form of cancer in young men aged 15 to 35, which I guess is our target audience. I know, I know a guy who had uh, who had testicular cancer when he was 16. Wow! So it, it is a real, it is absolutely a real thing. It is. I have yeah. a, lot of, a lot of time for and that. And if you've got a big, gigantic, out of control hedge down there, how are you going to fucking feel your balls if they got exactly. a lump? Exactly. Yep. You know. Exactly. Yeah, thank you to Manscaped for the We Save Balls initiative. Also, smell oh so fresh and clean this spring with Manscaped. Use code TRIFORCE at manscaped.com to get 20% off and free shipping. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code TRIFORCE at manscaped.com. Upgrade your life. Well done. Thank you. On with the show. So, uh, I, I've had a couple of emails. I know this isn't towards the end of the podcast, but I thought they might be worth discussing. I had one from uh, Taylor. Right. If this is a redundant email, sorry, I'm behind. Medieval people had, on average, better teeth than we do, he says. All right. Or they say, <laughs> right. Taylor says. Right. Bear in mind, this was about a month ago we talked about medieval oh, but teeth. I, I, I think I remember uh, something. It's something to do with the sugar. Like there's, right. There's so they no... did not have access to refined sugars and things yes. until the early modern period when they started colonizing the Caribbean and making sugar plantations. Yeah. The medieval diet would have been mostly vegetables, the odd bit of meat and bread, which again would be far denser and mostly grain. Their teeth would wear down over time if they ate a lot of hard foods, of course. But if you think about it, when you go to the dentist, they aren't saying you've lost 10% of your teeth overall since your last visit. They're usually telling you, yeah, you've got a small cavity over here we should fill in. Yeah. The reason our teeth get destroyed so quickly is because the shit we eat bores holes in them. When the sugar colonies got up and running, they actually saw a notable jump in deaths among the merchant class, upper class, nobility, basically anyone could who could afford sugar. What happened was rich people would eat straight sugar as a flex, and then they would get massive cavities going all the way down to the gums, and the giant holes were perfect places for infections. Jaw gets infected, basically, and for their entire head was start getting necrosis and stuff. Thank you, Taylor. Ooh, wow. Very Jeez. interesting. Thank you, Taylor. Interesting. Wow. Interesting. I've I've been educated. The you get a lot of this stuff on like um, Reddit with like ask historians or whatever. There'll be some guy asking some weird question. Yeah. And there'll be some either no responses right. because that none of them are suitable, or they'll and then finally there'll be like one Netflix <laughs> documentary essay style, you know, like whole mega thread, um, which some historians actually have taken the time. It's like their thesis, you know, right? And it's and it's um, maybe it is. It's, their it's thesis, good reading, you know. Maybe they're just like 
that's that's what they've been studying this whole time, but they'll never let you know because they just want to sound like oh, you, they copy paste. I just did my own research yeah. and uh, you know I came up with this um, in like oh. five minutes. You know, I did my that's own kind research. of my go-to reading though. Ask historians like if I'm trying to go to sleep, you know, there'll be something about. I'm sure they'd love to hear know, that. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. You really helped me get to sleep. Although some some Triforce fans have said they do that yeah. as well. I'm like. Yeah, what if, whatever that, it takes, you know. It's I don't pretty, think pretty it's mean. necessarily saying that something's so boring or whatever. Maybe it's like you got to put a positive Soothing. spin on it. Maybe it's just yeah. so comfy. I, I I think it has to be interesting enough to be be like keep you going until you're tired, but not that interesting that it's a page turner. You yeah. know? Right. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> this is not a page turner. Man, I hate podcast, that feeling when honest. you're when you're reading a book or you're watching something on your iPad and you you fall asleep and like and that thud that whatever you're holding makes when it like when it's sli- <laughs> like go like when you drop yeah. it on the ground or it just like flops onto your chest because you're laying on the ground like doing this or whatever right you fall asleep yeah and it's well do you remember I've, I've I, I was that. having a go at opera music as well the other week so i got a couple of messages on twitter from people saying that either they listen to the podcast and they are opera singers and right. i apologize right. uh, for offending them but here's one from <laughs> scott who says long time fan first time writing in and a professional opera singer holy crap. no offense right. no offense taken at your collective comments about the genre i know it's not for everyone and the reason i know is that intellectually and culturally i come from the same run-of-the-mill middle-class background you guys holy do. shit Thank you, what scott. a burn i know i have definitely attended fancy gala events where it was basically part of my job to praise thank and variously suck up to posh people right. with their loafers lack of socks and conspicuous haircuts but truth be told although i love singing and i love the music i would rather spend my downtime playing video games or listening to slash watching Yogg's Ghost Club. I'm not alone <laughs> oh, in this. Man. There were plenty of other singers who would bring their laptops into the dressing room and play League or Dota to relax. And one guy I toured with was a huge Triforce fan. There you go. So uh, he says they you got fans from pretty much every corner of human endeavor, even among people whose work you may not be a reciprocal fan of. Holy he's a big fan of the, the podcast. Thank shit. you, Taylor. They, sorry. Oh, no, Scott. Yeah, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Uh, and I, I did get another one if you want to now i'm worried that maybe adele has been listening to these podcasts because like i think for like three weeks straight i basically said that she's boring but you know <laughs> maybe she's like maybe this is like how she likes to unwind in her downtime between her boring ass <laughs> shows she's taking a rest in the back room listening to this podcast and here i God, am can you imagine slamming her left right and center sorry adele i'm sorry Apologize, <laughs> Adele. God damn it! God damn this, uh, man. <laughs> there was one uh, about the 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 naming of hurricanes. Do you remember this? This is about yes, two yes, months yes. ago. Yes, um, Vaguely. Uh, just yeah. listen, what did we say about, uh, about opera? Uh, uh, like on the I, topic of that. Before we are, what do you think we quick? said? Well, we just I, we just <laughs> said it was for rich people and it sucked. Yeah, right, that's okay. pretty much it. So I said, are there any Collins out there? Because we said, dude, that's a name you don't hear anymore. Colin, yeah. An email from a lad called Colin. Uh, <laughs> he's 24. Oh my he's God. He's from Scotland. You don't, you don't see that often. You know, no. my, my name as well. Man, there, nobody in my kids' classes like uh, is called Chris. Like, I, It's just a dead fucking boomer name now. Like, I don't think Chris anybody, is, well, yeah, you don't anybody any calls their kids Chris anymore. But they they're all they you do hear the old lady names come back in like there's an olive. Yeah, and yeah. Lots of yeah. Olive, olive yeah. Olivia yeah. are like this super is, I had popular. This from you, names, wasn't it? From yeah. you last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went through this. All right, go on, guess Sorry, give us yeah, the next one. Man. On. That was just from Colin saying that uh, they Colins don't name do any, exist. any storms after Scottish names because it would have been Hurricane Borbag was what they would have come up with. Right. Um. But uh, yeah, there, there, there's <laughs> really that, that's it. That's it. Hurricane those Borbag. those are the emails. Yeah. They should it's do that. Bad, they should really. call them things that we don't, we don't like, not like slight like gentle insults, you know, right. hurricane dickhead, yeah. hurricane prick, yeah. hurricane asshole. Yeah. I think it'd be like, a just, bit more, they should let the public decide on the names of the hurricanes because they have oh, like the, the advanced no. warning, right? Like, what, do you want to Mc- let the public yeah, decide Remember when they anything? named that one, the, the boat, Bodie McBoatface? Yeah, yeah. of yeah. course I yeah. do. And now it's become, some people think that's really hilarious. There are people out there who like, Bobby McBoatface, you know what I mean? I mean, it, 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 it's, <laughs> it's not, it's not in its, it's not in, funny. It's, it's not fine. in and of itself it's like funny. A it's it's joke, funny that it was open to a public forum and everybody just agreed yeah, on the dumbest thing. Yeah, but that's what they went thing. with. Yeah. 
Yeah, but That's I think we joke, are all a little bit. Everyone, it just shows how many people are down for a bit of tr- light trolling. Yes. So yeah. you know, like it, like all the boomers can get along with that and vote for that. Everyone, it's it's encompassing. It, it joins together. It brings us together. It's good. It's positive. And, then, and it's never going to be problematic, opinion. right? Unless somebody who is actually legally named Bodie McBoatface gets cancelled or whatever, and then they have to change the name of the boat. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe it's, it's, it's maybe it's still not a like smarter an move than naming name it for after an actual person as well. who is just going to turn out to be some sort of degenerate that needs to be cancelled and removed from history, like we've seen happen, right. like everyone, yeah, apparently. a lot, like uh, more recently, right? Nothing should be named after anyone no. ever again. I'm down yeah, for it. Yeah, honestly. don't name stuff after yeah. people. Why don't we make up new words for things? Yeah, just make up a new fucking word, a brand new word. What? Squiz blob. There's already squiz squiz blob. Squiz bl- the HMS squiz blob. The squiz blob um, uh, memorial statuette <laughs> uh, for high excellence in theater. You know, like uh, it, yeah. don't don't name it after like uh, somebody. Is that the name of the ship? Just the HMS <laughs> squiz blob. <laughs> no one's got the a problem with that. In- Theatre, operatic theatre. Shipping it new. It's like a, it's like Adam Sandler or something. <laughs> uh, just right. make up a so new it's... word. It's much safer, much simpler. Nobody can complain about that. It's completely. It's not referring to any culture yeah. or peoples or, or anything. Yeah, anything. it's just a made-up no word. No ideals. Just, just do that. Nothing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fluid. But I think that the the that's going to cause problems though and confusion, right? Because what if you have to like report on the ship going missing or t- transfer? You know, people. It needs to just be give it a number, man. Be, like, ship number five three two nine nine er has not <laughs> appeared on the radar for some time, and authorities are okay, worried. That's good. You know what I mean? Like, okay, no, I like just that. A, that's give it a number. Do that. Like, not even and a code people, name. People should all have numbers too. Yes, I'm sick of names. Yeah, me too. Just number, that's true. person number, and we, rather than like go into like There's four Simons numbers. I know, right. and there's like 12 yeah. Toms I know. I'm sick of them. You need a unique yeah. hey, identifier. 17B43 slash 8X underscore underscore Wind your neck in 5392532. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we need symbols in there, P Flat. I, I think we do. Because we don't want to. Well, look, there's 8 billion people, right? You're going to have to go wind your neck in there. Eight billion one hundred eighty-seven thousand four hundred eighty-two. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to sound it out like it's, that. Though. It's just, silly. just say the numbers. I think it's fine to just say the numbers. Yeah, but you're right on the eight billion. Like eight billion is like it's like eight three nine seven yes. two six four one one yeah. seven. Like That's a quite a long number. number yeah, it's long to have. But uh, Chuck, on... he's right. Chucking the billion and the million in there has just made it more confusing. Yeah, yeah. It becomes like but a. It's, it's harder almost. for me to remember it as a just string of numbers as. It well, is it's like a like phone a, number, though. You know, like, do you remember? Yeah, but I don't know it yet. No. I'd have to learn it. I can remember well, they could some use... pretty old phone numbers. I do, too. I, I guess since one. kids nowadays don't really remember phone numbers, right? Because no, they're just saved no, they into a phone. They do. press a button. You don't really need I mean, to know I don't know, know my numbers. wife's phone numbers for her phones. No. I just, I, I mean, vaguely, but I always forget the starty bit and the endy bit. So it's not really a, a number at all. Yeah. So I just know a couple of bits. Yeah. And sadly, that doesn't help. The operator explained that to me. I still remember. Look, it's got a five and a four in it. It just fucking put me through. I still remember phone numbers from like uh, most, if not all, of my friends <laughs> growing up as a right. kid. And exactly. interestingly, if I dialed those numbers uh, today, I would get through to their parents who all still live in the same goddamn <laughs> yeah. places yeah, like yeah. 30 years later. Um, it's uh, yeah, but I never well, do. Useful. But like, it's it's funny to think, you know, just people like, like consistency. I think the there is that option. Remember where they have the geolocated areas based on like three random words joined together, right? right. Yeah. You can because there's so much variation with that that you can basically do anything. You can you can you know if you type in like cucumber, um, tabletop, hat box, or whatever the fuck, right. you know. It it'll take you to a very very specific geolocation. Yeah, mm-hmm. and at that geolocation, there's a piece of there's an envelope. When you open the envelope, it'll tell you the release date for Half Life Three. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. one of those. It's one of those riddles. It's at East, there's probably Easter eggs. It's like I'm a sure. Carmen San Diego ri- riddle. But you could just call people that, you know, just give them a, th- a three three word like consistent designation right like so you could call them like tango charlie foxtrot and, and then when you're out of all the phonetic stuff you, and the military stuff you can just uh you can just say like hey what's up there yeah but um, it would be like it would be like pineapple curtain marathon or race whatever. car they'd have like some yeah. weird name yeah, yeah. so and like that, the very the very center of queen square in bristol is thick riches fall 
Thick Riches oh. Fold. It's right Thick... next to Reward Race Exist. Oh. So you see that one's fine, but I think that Thick Riches Fold is a problem because those words are not clear how they're spelled. This rich has got an E in it as well. Well, right, here's a better one then. Do you know I mean? this, this is from also the center of Queen Square. Wash Goat Doctor. Wash Goat <laughs> there you Doctor. Go. Exactly. Wash You're not going to forget that, are you? You're like, where do you live? Wash Goat Doctor. Okay, I'll put that in my phone. Bam. I've got like, it's better than yeah. like, you know, BL229JJ or whatever. Yeah. It's harder Earth to remember. Right? Pirate. Flows yeah. out a start. Mental exactly. invite pump. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a Mental good one. invite pump. Mental yeah. invite mm. pump. I like that. See, they're not, they're yeah. they're all like very generic. The thing is, they don't use the like cool words though, like mastermind or <laughs> terraforming. Do you know what I mean? They don't use like <laughs> interesting words. Nice. They use like fucking ordinary sentence words that are boring. Yeah, um, but the combinations and... are endless. I guess right. Like that's why. That, yeah, that's I why mean, it you've exists. got. A... Bajillion words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! So, anything else interesting happened this week? Well, um, I mean, there's like the obvious one with the. I guess there's a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters passed away. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Drugs, drugs related. Drugs apparently. related, apparently, yeah. or, or oh potential, um, potential like uh, heart uh, issues around. Uh, I mean, he drug had abuse. apparently ten. This is on the report I read. Ten different drugs in his yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wow. young man, though, yeah. man. That's only... like fucking hard work to get that many in He's there. He's like 50 years old, though. It's like... Uh, yeah, he was, yeah. With, uh, with a family and... Obviously... I mean, the thing is, whenever someone dies of drugs like that, the automatic assumptions are like, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, almost like they deserved it. Well, sort of thing. I, the thing is, like, uh, you remember um, Philip Seymour Hoffman when he passed away? Oh, um, oh he, God, the, yeah. he, he He overdosed on drugs and it had Heroin. he'd had problems with drugs but apparently leading up to him passing away he'd been clean for like 20 years or something and it was no, uh, i don't think it was it 20 but he had been clean for he, a while it'd been a while but, yeah. but it was a relapse and i think what happens is that when somebody relapses they they're sort of like oh i used to do this this much drugs right I'll just do this much, I guess. But then give me their, exactly this their, much of the their drugs. tolerance That's has my, gone down or something, and it's easier to overdose or something. Yeah, I, I hear this too. Yeah, yeah. Like so it's, it's, it could be something like a, that. that. That was the old speedball, wasn't it? It was like the yeah. combination of the upper, like the heroin and the downer, like the, the, the cocaine, like the other way around. I but think yeah. the heroin is the downer, but yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like heroin and cocaine. That's fucking. It's the it's the the, com the ultimate combo. Surely they doom. cancel each other out. I don't know. Yeah, You're nice. not, it's it's super dangerous, down. apparently, because you don't. It's easy to over. Apparently, he'd been complaining about chest pains and stuff, and um, like people said, well, I don't know well, if it's related. Hawkins. Yeah, in the days leading up, so I don't know, maybe. Oh, here's related. the thing. Talking about chest pains, uh, this is a message to any women that <coughs> watch the pod listen to the podcast. Right. Uh, I read a really interesting article about the signs of heart attacks in women being substantially different, very often, to the signs that we all associate with heart attacks. Because when they do a lot of the research, they run a lot of the textbooks around medicine, and this is true in a lot of aspects of medicine, it's very male-centric around symptoms and signs and early warnings and all that kind of stuff. Women can have completely different symptoms for impending heart attacks to men. One of the more common ones that women have is back pain. Right. Men don't tend to get that. They tend to get their shooting down the arm, all the ones that in the movies like, oh, my arm, my chest, oh, keels over. Yeah. So women can have a completely different set of You don't uh, often hear of a woman science. having a heart attack or dying from a heart attack. It seems mostly it's men. It's not as common, yeah. but it is absolutely it, it is perfectly common. Like yeah. I know I know several uh, women have died of heart attacks. So it, it is it is common. All right. But I think it's seen as more of a thing that men tend to die of. Yeah. Um but yeah, the, we all know, you know, even from all the movies what the signs are uh for heart attacks in, in men. I, I can't remember a film or a TV show where a woman has had a, a heart attack. No, actually. I mean that's um, what I'm basing everything on. Yeah, here. <laughs> mm. my, like there's a big, big moment. I don't in a know TV anybody. Show where a well, woman actually, has my a my grandfather had a heart attack, but but I was very young at the time, so I wasn't aware of like any sort of right. the lead up or anything. I just remember him being quite quite ill afterwards and taking a long time to sort of get back uh, on track post having his heart attack, sort of thing. But mm. uh, I was I was way too young to really know what the hell was going on, you know. Yep, true that. I watched um, a documentary that came out this week called um, 
the hunt for the crypto king oh i saw how, that was recommended but i did not watch it yeah it's 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 all right but it was kind of an interesting story about how this guy basically had ran this big crypto exchange in canada um, right Quad- quadriga what was his, did he what do was a his rug name pull did he do right his name was gerald cotton oh Jerry yeah cotton. of course yeah i went to school with him and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, like, it was going really well. You're right. Everything was fine. And then he sort of died um, oh. mysteriously oh, in no. India. And obviously, he was the only one who knew all the passwords oh. to all the crypto. Oh, and wow. there was all the crypto was missing. Um, and so the documentary was really kind of unsatisfying because... They haven't figured it out. Well, they they a, a reporter went there and spoke to the doctor who was at the hospital where he died and was like, "Oh yeah, this guy definitely died here," and I saw it. You know, it was definitely definitely real real death. It wasn't like a fake death certificate right. or anything. So they reckon he did actually die. But they but there was no suspicious it, circumstances around. His well, they death, also they found just... that like he had he was a member of all these hacker forums and he'd like run all like a bunch of scams previously like right. he was had this like secret identity he was like this super nice looking nerdy guy on the out on the front but behind closed doors he was like this scam artist right so weird like weird sort of story yeah man i i, I guess God. it's weird like some people you know from the outside who they are right like there's this guy who goes to this meetup that i sometimes go to yeah um we refer to him as creepy guy right and He's a creepy guy. Uh, he kind of, kind of speaks like this to people. Right. And he's got like dank hair and spots and <laughs> he's kind of big and creepy and gross. And he asks people <laughs> nice. creepy questions. Oh, okay. Right? Like like he asks, like there were these couple of girls we were chatting to at our table and um, he came up to the table, obviously ignored the guys and just casually asked one of the girls, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what world do I live in where this guy is so clueless that that is like just a question you open with, you know? And uh, she just, God bless her, replied such a such a perfect response. I don't give my age to strangers. You know, just I don't give right. my age to strangers. Right. Just just this casual, like, great response. And so sort of undeterred, he turned to the next girl and said, uh, uh, where, do, where do you live? Um, like a robot, <laughs> right? And and she replied, "I don't know Bristol very well." <laughs> As, and again, like a, a like a great oh, diverting que- a great diverting answer, which means she doesn't have to answer. I I don't know Bristol very well. It's just like such a like I don't know. Like I I guess people they're just I just was I just want to shout those guys out for being so practiced in their in their diplomatic responses, but. I don't know, like we we that guy wears who he is on his sleeve, right? Yeah, Everyone, well, well, rightly or wrongly, I guess. Yeah, I, and you know what you're getting, really, with that, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Uh, Where do you live? That's not a good opening. How old are you? <laughs> Man, so I think well, I, that's. But the, I've, he's been doing this for months. Hopefully, you know? this club that you're going to is one is like a uh, you know a crash course in uh, social etiquette, like and, and b- that maybe he'll benefit from like over over time. The thing is, if you teach, if you try to teach people who have zero social skills how to be sociable, they try to run through it like a checklist. Yeah, like like you'd say if you know if your toaster isn't working. First, try checking that it's turned on. You know, tr- then change the fuse. Yeah. So they're like they're, they're trying all these things, right. and when it doesn't work, they're like, "Why isn't this working?" <laughs> I I followed the formula that I was given at my training course about how to speak to women, and it is not working. These bitches are being rude to me. I I, I hate women. Oh, like man. that's what happens. Is you you give someone a manual and they think this is how it man, works. Man, I oh, uh, on the topic of bitches, I don't know what's going on on TV. I don't know what show this was, but on BBC One last night there was a show called Bitches in Cages. I swear oh to God, God, I don't know are what you the fuck serious? that is. It was what the fuck? Yeah, I was Let's just. Not- I was unless it's actually about unless it's about related to Crufts or like the dog show. Do you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm uh, not maybe down for that. I was just I was just like scrolling through to get put the channel on to like the kids channel because like when my kids wake up early in the morning they turn the TV on. 
It's a TV show on BBC Three. Bitches in cages. Sasha goes on her first girl's work trip abroad, but things take a sinister turn as the reality of what's expected from the girl starts to become clear. Oh, I, I don't know show? what's going on. I thought the title was awesome, though. I, I thought that sounded Check it is. fucking hilarious, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches in cages. <laughs> it's not oh, a reality show, thank God. Yeah. It's actually a self, I assume it's self-aware. So it's a TV show called Mood. Oh. Apparently. Wait, so like, it was it like an episode name or something like that? Yeah. All oh, right. So there's, oh, I ain't come to, pl- okay. to pay, I came to slay. After wannabe singer Sasha is kicked out by her family, she's got to find her own way. Right. Get that shmoney. Bitches in cages. Bitches in cages. Fake the shit. Fake Baby the fake girl. Sh- Fuck the fake shit. Oh, fake the fake shit, I thought it said. But yeah, why is would they... Is that a mood, though? <laughs> Bitches in cages? Like, uh, I, don't I, I know. I guess I, I just don't mood. get what a, yeah. what a... Like, I know what a mood is, but, like, maybe I'm missing well, context look, let me, or something. Well, let me be honest with you guys. He, there's, a, there's a comedian called Catherine Cohen who has a Netflix special at the moment called The Twist. Right. She's gorgeous. That's the name of the series, right? Right. So I, I'm going to put Catherine Cohen, Bo Burnham... And a few other of those modern comics into the same bucket, which is, I don't get it. And I don't know if they would want me to watch their comedy. I don't know if they'd see me as like, you're not invited. I I don't understand it. I don't know if they're playing a character. Am I meant to be laughing at them? Are they laughing at me? Am I, uh, is this ironic? Is it not ironic? Are they being honest? Is this who they are? Are they referencing some modern trend I'm not aware of? It's so over my head. I've I've never what's felt so this, what old is like in my the, life. What's the what's what is like the material like though? Like what are the jokes like? Are they... so her her show? I watched about twenty minutes of it and I didn't laugh and I I didn't get it. Like right. I, I couldn't okay. tell if, if well, if, it's just not for you. I mean, the, no, no, no. We've had, it, we've it had these things before. Are you right? a fan? Right, right, like, but the, I, no, I detect some defense in your tone. No, no, he no. He seemed defensive. He he wants to move on. Is what it right. is. No, no, no. I, I, I want don't. To ask I want question. to hear all about this. I'm right. really interested. I, so, I, so here's I, what will, I will be honest with you. I've never even heard of these people you mentioned. So I'm I'm completely oh, oblivious. He's fairly big, I'd say. He had You've a pretty big special. Oh, Burnham, I've the, heard the, the name, but I, I I can't say I'm familiar with. Like, I wouldn't be able to like pick him out in a lineup or anything. Right. So well, I, the, I watched that thing, and people He's lost their shit about it. Oh my god, it was so funny. I I didn't get it. Like, I, I still don't understand. Like, it's like this post, post, post modern, so ironic. It's not ironic, but that makes it ironic. Like, I, I, it's just so. I don't know if it's too clever for me or if it's just what so is it? dumb like, that sarca- I don't get is it. Is he being it's... like sarcastic or something? Like, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Like, that's the problem I have is I'm not saying, what, where's the jokes? You know, knock, knock. That's a joke. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is, I, I don't to. even understand <laughs> yeah. if he's meant to be a fucking character. Am I meant to be laughing at him or with him? Does he despise everything that isn't Bo Burnham? Because it feels like that. But at the same time, then he's very self-deprecating. It's too many layers. It's too meta. Do you, and do I you don't get, understand it. Sometimes you get this when your partner like or your wife watches something with you, right? And you hate it but they love it or vice versa and they can't yeah. convince you or you can't convince the them i can't even good. get my yeah. wife to watch something though like uh, in the first place to even get to that point like i've been trying right. to get her to watch whiplash for like years and she <laughs> just not even worth watching. <laughs> she will not watch it and i'm like good for her but i but i think it's, it's got like two good scenes come on the rest most of the movie's fucking it's okay. boring as shit. Oh, it's, it's not it's it's all right it's a pretty good movie like um, i mean it's 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 no uh matrix uh were you rushing or were you dragging <laughs> like that's no, the whole I, movie I think, right like, there she's interested in like psychology and stuff like that so i thought you know it'd be a pretty good movie like to to watch like it's distressing Right. at times and interesting whatever <laughs> and she's just like not having it like we can't i yeah. can't even start the movie she just is like no nah, i don't want to watch that i'm not in i'm the trying mood. to get my eldest to watch encanto and she won't watch it she's like no I like, loved she's like, Encanto. No. I, yeah, she was. She don't want to know. Man, she loves no, all the animated movies. I was movies. a little bit I got like three that, kids, though, and we have not seen that yet. You know, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's weird good. though. Sometimes that I'm, I'm, I know I do it myself. I'm like resistant. I'm like, no, I'm not going to watch this fucking thing. I'm not going to watch this with you, Jamie. Well, but I was like then, that with Married at First Sight Australia, and now I'm like fucking hooked, man. Like if it's not on watched? for a day, I'm like. 
I, I'm 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 like uh, I'm I'm doing like Pablo Escobar like on the swing and standing in the field alone and stuff. You know, like the that that. I was that talking meme. to one of these folks in the office, and they were like, "Oh yeah, I love Married at First Sight Australia, but what's better is the Undateables." Have you? Oh, watched I have not any watched that? that. No. No. Apparently, it's it's the it's kind of a more wholesome. Uh, version. Uh, I don't want wholesome. I, no, I just want. I just I, want. I want a bunch just of want train crazy people that I can make other. fun of and not feel bad about making fun of them. Okay. Oh God. All right. Well, no, that's fine then. I guess that that creepy guy is is one of the undateables. Yeah, but I'd feel bad like uh, it, making fun of the undateables because I think a but lot I think of the, times all they, the undateables are super nice. People. You're meant that's to the feel from, really sorry from a couple for them. Of episodes though, right? that I've seen. No, but you're not really because they're just so nice. You never date you know, any you of just, them. Though, you're right? rooting for them though. You yourself would not date one of them though, right? Well, I think they wouldn't date me though because they are they. I'm not like them, right? Um, What's you know, that? I'm not in their world. Oh. Well, you have to find people who are kind of passionate about i don't know trains like overly passionate like m insanely passionate right. about trains and they have to meet someone who's insanely passionate about something similar to trains what that, i think that wouldn't <laughs> work though right trains. i think in this case if you're overly passionate about something surely like uh, opposite attract has to kick in right like there's no room in a relationship for you to both be obsessed with trains like it would just be too weird right yeah but i think that you have to have similarities with your partner you, you do have to share things in common right and i think that you have to have a a, a currency there's got to be a currency there somewhere yeah but it can't be that you both love trains so much i'm not trying to say i'm too normie um for, for these people <laughs> i don't know it's i've never thought about it i'm definitely not like a, a, the i'm definitely wouldn't go married at first sight australia though in a sense because i'm not normal enough for that right um, right. They're all normal lads and ladies. They're I don't know all, if they you know, are though. Honestly, they go to the like, gym I, I and feel they, like sometimes they look good. when they're on there, at first you're like, "Why are they on this?" Like they, you know, these people seem like nice, well rounded. Like they shouldn't have a problem finding somebody. And then as the series drags on, you're like, "I now realize exactly why this person <laughs> is on this show." Right, like I uh, see. like the mask slips. Right, they're very good at hiding their arseholishness for a while right but inevitably it slips the mask out. comes off yeah i see they're see. on best behavior at his, the start you see the rotten core <laughs> <First hand. laughs> here's, a, here's another piece of news here's another piece of news bruce willis is having to retire from acting that's yeah i read, read about that he's got um what was the what's the complaint a, he has aphasia aphasia so, yeah so it's a, he's stepping away so i i say you know bruce willis hasn't really made good movies for some time right uh but he's certainly uh what was you know, the last the last big um movie or set of movies he's in was the expendables right the yeah which was just so he was like he wasn't a big part of those i think he like and wasn't there a die hard movie. reboot like maybe in the last decade or so uh there was a new die hard movie was there not or am uh, i thinking longer back now hmm. i don't know but i'm just looking at his films and if you look, he he was in uh, a Hudson lot of Hawk. direct to video stuff. Right. Uh, a lot. Like the so, Lion King 6 and stuff like that. I mean, he was in Sin City, right? Sin um, City, yeah. That was pretty big when it came out. But uh, was. There's, there's, I'm just Very looking stylized. here in 2021. He was in Pulp he, Fiction as well, but I mean, that's going back. He was in seven films in 2021. He was in 12 only, Monkeys as well, if you remember. Yeah, that he one. was. But it, the, of those seven films in 2021, only one of Wasn't them. Wasn't he in The Fifth Element went to as the well? Cinema. Yeah, yes, that's of a good course. Movie, he was that. the lead actor in The Fifth good Element. Movie. Recommend. Yeah, he's been in some bangers, actually. He, he, he makes an awful lot of director video stuff right. Reprisal, Airstrike. Uh, survive the night, hard kill. You know these kinds. Because you always have that career, sort of though, stony face Bruce and Willis. say "yippee motherfucker" in like every movie now. Like, has he become that kind of actor? I mean, here's a film, "Out of Death." What does that mean? Uh, Midnight in the Switchgrass, a crime right. thriller. Survive the game. He sounds like he's just been grinding hard, like De behind the scenes. For Fortress. Is he in the Expendables? These are all very movies. American Siege. He was, yeah. I mean that's but not a Flax all, is all saying not a big part in the expense. Marauders, rock the Casbah. Oh wait, that's actually a Bill Murray movie that he's in for some reason. It's, um, it's so so he's taking a break from uh, from uh, so he's quitting no, he's not actually. taking a break. He's, he's done. done. He's yeah, just out. He's done. He's out. He was in the Expendables as an uncredited cameo, 
He's got to be. The Expendables too. He's got to be at a point in his life now where financially he's he can he can You'd hope retire. So. I'm sure he was that twenty shit, years ago, right? dude. Like yeah, I don't yeah. think that that's ever be a thing. I think it's just because he's passionate about it. I think the thing is, it. if you it's, are it's your passionate life, it's your job, about you what make you do, these cool events. Yeah. I think it must be incredibly yeah. sad for these actors to be involved in things like the Matrix. You know, the new one that's so obviously critically panned and hated. You know, I think it's I think that they they Keanu and these guys are not doing it for the money. You know, I don't think anyway. Some of them are, like Nicolas Cage for taxes and stuff, you know, obviously. <laughs> but but, so, but Keanu, I don't... I think he's... I think in a way, you know, he doesn't need to do it. I think he did it because he had fond memories of it and fond memories of what people yeah. thought of it. And yeah. he almost like was... Do- yeah. I don't say he's doing it for the people. I'm sure there was a lot of reasons why he did. <laughs> but, you know... This is for the people <laughs> of Ukraine. <laughs> it's cut that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, I, I think Keanu Reeves is bigger than whatever he's in now. In that he's such a beloved character because he seems like such a lovely guy. He could do whatever he wants. Like he could make a movie and it could be dreadful, and he could still make another movie and it doesn't matter. I mean, the new Bill and Ted movie was fucking awful. Matrix Did Resurrection you watch was, it? Was awful. No, I didn't fucking watch it. I saw the trailer and I was like, I'm out. Yeah. I'm no this interest is the best in this yeah, movie in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but he, he, I mean, you know, I'm sure that Keanu could come along. People love him. People love him. And uh, I just think he's a very likable guy. They do like Bruce, him. Bruce Willis was not a likable guy. I don't think people liked Bruce Willis. His public persona was awfully gruff. No. Uh, he had Keanu, no time for the it. hype around Keanu being in, in cyberpunk was huge too. Eh? Everybody yeah, was people losing their it. minds. Hello, I'm Keanu Reeves. I'm in this. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> but that game sucked. And now yeah. a new Witch is coming though in like years' time, but they've announced they're doing another Witcher game. Holy please crap. Please, God, let it be good. Please. Yeah. They're talking well, a lot please. about like retiring Geralt and having a new Witcher being the main character. That would be a mistake. Yes, that's what I said. But apparently, the symbol is different. It's not like it's not the same wolf anymore. It's like a different sort oh. of. Please just let me do Witcher again, like Witcher three, but a whole new thing. Just do that. He just, just wants, do that. He just it's wants not a movie. Witcher. It's a video game. I just want another. I want a new Witcher game. That's it. That's it. That's all oh, we yeah. want. I don't mind doing the same I just thing over and over. I tried to spook over. you and keep your expectations. Yeah. You scared expectations me. Now. You scared me now. Yeah, he's thank you. Now stressed, I'm worried. He's stressed to the gills now. Yeah, thanks. Well, I finished Elden Ring, so a lot of the stress in my oh, life. Oh, nice. Is, well uh, done. Well done. Did you hundred percent it, or did you just? God no, dude. Oh. I mean, there was a bunch of stuff I missed out, and apparently at the ending, I completely skipped over one bit. I just ended up a big fat lad sitting on a throne. Job done. I was like, cool. Did it. Beat Elden Ring. <laughs> happy. Took me about seventy hours. Nice. Uh, value for money, I'd say. It was. It was really good. And I'll do hours. it again someday. It's pretty yeah. good, actually. It was really it's, good. It's pretty good. Yeah. You still need to play it, Sips. Anyway, one day. Yeah, I know. I need to. Uh, I need to get around one to day. it. One day. Hey, listen. The only other thing that happened uh, is uh, Will Smith uh, slapped Chris Rock in the face at the. Your Oscars. thoughts quickly. Where, where, uh, this has been done to death, was... hasn't it? Yeah, it really has. Like. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Quickly, one sentence each. On he this. should have been arrested before he was allowed to get his Oscar. Yeah, I think he should have been kicked out for doing that, and I, I not agree. not been able to have a do an Oscar speech as well. Fuck Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. a, a rare moment where we're all agreed. <laughs> well, I mean, last week I think I was saying about because my my son they they're doing uh, Fresh Prince, they're learning oh, about the Fresh right. Prince, and they're they're, oh, do, they're studying it at school or whatever. And uh, and my son, through watching the Fresh Prince, really likes Will Smith. And uh, he came home from school and he's like, Dad, did Will Smith really go up on stage and punch somebody? And I said, yeah, unfortunately he did. And he said, oh, well, that's okay. He's still my favorite actor. (laughs) And I said, okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Okay. But I did have to say to him, I said, uh, just make sure that you don't ever punch anybody uh, because what he did was wrong. (laughs) And he's like, okay. (laughs) Well, I still think he's really good as the Fresh Prince, and I just said, "Okay, <laughs> good, chat. Good, good chat." chat. I like how I like what him sidling out there. What the hell are you going to say to a ten-year-old? Well, I mean, good chat. Geez, like, good chat. You know, uh, he's, he's he's got his mind made I up. Love that. I don't want to. 
Yeah. yeah well, obviously, wanna... we're not on the finger of the pulse of um, Timely. You know, that happened about a week ago, and uh, this podcast nah, is going to yeah, be released but... two weeks from now. So yeah. my brain has only just processed it. Yeah. So it's like yeah, well, brand new news for me. Anyway, thank you for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Lots of love to you all. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye.